The new Clef coat has just released from Love Notions, and today I want to show you how easy it is to do a lining for it. First, let's take a closer look at what all the cleft coat has in it uh, that makes it such an irresistible pattern for this season and into the next. So as you can see, this is a totally transitional, um, good for every season kind of coat. Um, or jacket really. And today I'm going to show you my version um, as I sew it up. And one of the very common questions that we had when we started um, to let people get sneak peeks about this pattern was, does this have a lining? And the pattern doesn't have a lining um, option inside of it per se, but to put a lining in is so easy. I'm going to show you how with my coat. Now you can easily put a lining in any version of the cleft coat, but the um, options that I'm going to be using are, to start with, I'm going to be doing the hood version of my cleft coat. Um, instead of buttons, I'm going to be using the zipper version right here. So I will be lining the hood as well as the interior front and back bodice, as well as the sleeves. Um, we'll talk about my fabric choice to make sure that it's not too bulky for that. Um, and I'm also going to be using the kangaroo pockets, which you don't have to include on the pattern, but I think are a really nice detail. Um, and I'm going to be lining just the interior of those um, the kangaroo pockets. Now, obviously your specifications are gonna be different depending on your measurements, but my measurements show that I need to blend from a size medium at the top to a uh, large at the hip. So I'm blending from a medium to a large on my pattern pieces. And based on my just typical uh, to-dos um, and when I held the pattern up to me, I am also shortening the sleeves by one inch. For this particular make, I am going to forego that welt pocket, but you can see that that is such a cute addition to this kind of uh, make. So um, this would also be a great thing to include uh, if you're doing a lining because the pocket bag will be like completely encased. So if you're choosing to use a welt pocket, using a lining with that is a great option to finish it out really nicely. Now, when you're making a lining, typically you want the interior to be nice and slippery, uh, especially if you're doing um, a coat uh, that is maybe a little bit more form fitting. You want to have the interior lining be something that's like a satin or maybe even a rayon chalet or something that's got a little bit of slipperiness. For my make, though, I'm not going to be using something that's slippery on the inside for my uh, lining. I instead um, am kind of going based off of what my exterior is um, and kind of trying to match the vibe of that. Um, so my exterior for my make is going to be this canvas fabric. Um, it is a mauve soft canvas. This is from Minerva Fabrics. Um, as you can see, it is a woven with no stretch. It is uh, just, you can see the weave on it. It's kind of the same on the uh, reverse side as it is on the, the front side. And it is pretty soft, but it has some structure. So there's not like a drape with it, as you can see. Um, and I'm thinking, envisioning for this, that this is going to be a little bit more of like, kind of like those Carhartt jackets that you see. So um, this is not super thick. It's pretty thin, actually. And right now, like my kids almost had a snow day today. So it's cold and snowy. And I want something that feels a little bit more cozy today. Um, and that will hopefully take me through all of the Chicagoland uh, weather that we have for the first six months of the year, basically. So I'm going to be using, with my mauve soft canvas, I'm going to be using um, a French terry. This is the oatmeal French terry. It is super soft. Um, and it has like those striations on the inside of it. It is a very stretchy, so we're gonna um, make sure that we deal with that correctly when it comes time to sew. Um, I got this 
French Terry from Raspberry Creek, which I think they have this in stock now um, pretty regularly. And I think that this is going to be a nice match with the canvas. So it'll be nice and cozy on the inside. It won't be like super warm, but it'll be cozy. So I'm going to be lining the bodice and the sleeves with this. And I, I'm basically just going to be making like a reverse version of the sleeves uh, front and back bodices using this uh French terry. Now for the hood, I wanted something that was a little bit more substantial and I'm going to be using this um, quilted knit. Um, it's double-sided, but I think I'm just going to be showing off one side of it. Um, it's going to be the lining of the interior of the hood. And then I'll just be using the regular soft canvas for the, like, the outside of the hood. So um, that's going to be the lining inside the hood. Um, a couple of other things that I'm going to need are a separating zipper. Um, this one is 26 inches, but I think for the zipper view, you need a 24 inch. So I'm going to have to do a little work to get this shortened down to the right length. And then I also, um, Timmy picked up a bunch of these little like drawstring things. Like she got like a whole set of these on Amazon. So I'm going to use these drawstrings for the hood as well as the bottom, uh, like the elastic waistband, I'm going to be using these drawstrings to finish everything off. I know you can get like, um, like stopper sets and like the little, um, the cording and like all sorts of other little details to make your, uh, coat as professional as you can. Um, I know a lot of people are looking at snaps. They're using like those metal rivets. Um, and there's a lot of ways that you can really step up the quality of your make by incorporating some of those special details. So another thing that's nice about having a lining is that the interior of the coat, well, nobody is gonna see it from the outside. The interior of the coat, it, the lining is gonna cover up a lot of those um, openings that would typically be there, like where the interfacing is. And you wouldn't see those normally and it probably doesn't bother very many people, um, like for the welt pocket, for example, or the interfa interfacing that has to be around certain parts of the, for, for sewing the uh, coat. Um, and the lining is going to cover up a lot of those things to make it just feel fully finished and cozy and complete. Now, at this point, I have cut out all of my pattern pieces. I cut out the exterior just as normal using the regular pattern pieces, like with the modifications that I described just for my personal fit. And then there's just a couple of things that we're going to have to do to make sure that everything fits together when I put the lining on. So just a couple of quick little modifications that I'm going to make to my pattern pieces for the lining parts, just to make sure everything kind of folds over correctly and nothing's too bulky. Because when you're putting a lining together, especially depending on your fabric, you could have, you know, six to eight layers that are going underneath your serger or um, that are going to be underneath your sewing machine needle. So you really want to trim back and keep it's smart the way that you put things together just to make sure that everything goes through as easily as possible. Now, another modification that I'm going to be making is for the pocket. I'm going to leave the canvas version or the outside version of the kangaroo pocket as it is, um, but I am going to be cutting off this extra piece here so that when I fold over this part of the pocket, it's going to be kind of like this that this part will just get wrapped up in there. So it's going to kind of look like this. Now, as far as the rest of the pattern pieces and adjustments for this line version of Clef Coat, I'm just going to be making a duplicate set. So a duplicate set for the hood. And I'll just be making that exactly the same as the original hood. And then I'll be making a duplicate set of sleeves. So I've got one set of sleeves in the main fabric and one set of sleeves in the lining fabric. And I'm going to be cutting off the bottom inch of the lining fabric sleeves, just right at the bottom of the hem. So this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. I'm going to fold up that bottom one inch and then top stitch it here. And cutting off that extra one inch on the lining will make it a little less bulky. Now for the rest of the pattern pieces for the main part, the back and the front, I am going to be sewing them exactly the same way as they. I will be sewing them for the exterior pattern. So here's how I'm going to treat the kangaroo pocket. I'm going to serge the hem opening and then I'm going to fold that over the interior lining. 
Then after I've top stitched that down, I'm going to go around and serge the top sides and bottom. Um, and I'm going to fold in again by three eighths of an inch the top sides and bottom. I'm going to leave the other long side piece untreated so that it can just fit in by the zipper. Then I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the front of the coat at the markings. And then I'll proceed with the tutorial and sew the exterior of the coat exactly as it directs. I'm going to take some time to install the zipper and as well as the grommets or the openings for my drawstrings. I'm using openings at the straw for drawstrings at both the hood and at the bottom hemline. Note that I am not going to be trimming back anything on the hood opening, but I am going to be surging it so that it won't fray. And I'm going to take care of that a little bit later when I install the lining. Now for the bottom hemline, I have installed the grommets and I have also installed that zipper about one inch up from the bottom hemline. I'm going to make sure that that zipper is matching up exactly with the pocket placements. And I can do that by going ahead and zipping and just double checking that my grommets are matching up symmetrically as well as the top and bottom of the zipper as, and the pockets. If you were following the pattern directions, this is exactly what your cleft coat would look like at this point. And um, if you weren't installing a lining, what you would be doing next is flipping up the hem of the hood and creating a casing for your drawstring. Now you'll notice that it looks kind of unfinished on the inside, but there are uh, directions in the pattern for how to treat those seam allowances that are uh, a little bit exposed there. You can use twill tape, you can use bias tape, and really depending on your fabric, there's a lot of ways that you can treat it to make it look really finished and nice on the inside. And you can take a look at, closer at the pattern um, and it really will cut down on the time that you need to spend on finishing out everything. Um, I love using twill tape um, to cover up seam allowances. I think it looks really professional and it's kind of quick and easy. Um, again, another option is to use single fold or double fold pre-made bias tape, which really cuts down on the amount of time that you would have to spend. And you can even use it on places like finishing off the zipper seam allowance. But with the lining, all of those seam allowances and zipper seam allowance and all of those pieces will be covered up. So to do that, I'm just making a duplicate version of the exterior using my interior fabric. So you can see that the outside of this is really the wrong side of the fabric here. And I'm going to be inserting this into my main exterior fabric. Um, this is a French terry. And if you wanted it to be a little bit more slippery I would you could even just do the sleeves in one of those more silky fabrics um, and still get that cozy feel um, but you just really need to think about what sort of look you're going for and what sort of uh, finished measurements you're going to be ending up with now you might be wondering if we're going to be doing any trimming on the openings here now the only trimming that we're going to be doing is for the sleeves um, but for the bottom hemline and the hood, we are not trimming at all. So we're going to be attaching these together. We're going to pin them together, right sides together, sandwiching the zipper in between the main fabric and the right side of the lining fabric. So if you take a closer look at what I'm doing here, I'm going to be matching up all of those seams, um, the seam between the hood and the main body of the pattern. Um, and I'm going to be pinning or clipping all of those together all the way down. And since I'm using a knit fabric, I need to be really careful not to stretch the knit fabric. Um, it will, during sewing, it will already get a little bit more stretched out than a woven would. So I have to be really careful with that. And I found that when sewing, it's better to have the feed dogs underneath um, or most closely uh, next to the knit fabric and then have the woven layer on top and that just seemed to help prevent um, stretching and puckering between these two kind of unlike fabrics. So I'm clipping the opening of this jacket just from the zippered edge all the way up and around the hood and then down through the next 
uh, zippered edge. And I'm going to be using a 3 8 seam allowance on the zippered areas. And I will be using my zipper foot to get nice and close to that zipper, but not um, get my needle caught up in it. And then when it comes to the hood area, like I said before, since we're not trimming this and we're not folding it over, we're going to be actually using that extra one inch there to create a casing. So we're going to pin or clip that together and then sew that hood with a one inch seam allowance. So around the zipper area, we're going to be sewing with a three eighths seam allowance like usual. And then at the hood, we're going to be sewing with a one inch seam allowance so that when we flip this right side out, we'll be able to create a casing for the drawstring that will lay nice and flat. Here you can see what I mean. We're taking a one inch seam allowance when we get to the hood area, and we're taking a three eight seam allowance when we are going around the zipper area. Now here's what it looks like all turned right side out. And you can see that we still have that opening to deal with at the bottom hemline. So we're gonna turn that right sides together so that we can sew just that bottom hemline. And we're gonna sew that at one inch, similar to how we're gonna do it for the hood. And before you start sewing that one inch seam allowance on the bottom hem, please make sure that you take a second to remind yourself to leave a three inch opening so that you can turn everything right side out really easily. And when we come back to top stitch later, we'll take care of that little opening and make sure that it gets closed up. Now we have some corners here that we're going to need to clip. If we don't clip them, then they'll be rounded and weird looking and kind of messy. And you know, this is not a good look. So we're going to come back to this corner and clip it. Now, when we clip it, we do not need to trim or even grade any of the seam allowances because, again, those are going to be used for the drawstring channel. So we're going to flip that right sides out, and you can see if this is going to look really nice together. Just have to make sure that we clip those corners. So once we turn everything right side out, we're going to top stitch at one inch that hood opening so that we have a nice channel for that drawstring. And we could go through and top stitch the zipper again. I decided not to because I felt like everything looked pretty nice as is. But if you were worried about shifty fabric or just wanted a little bit extra detail on your version, your um, that would be totally appropriate here. And as I was sewing my version, I decided to keep the drawstring inside and not reinsert it later. I had a really hard time finding a bodkin that would go through and I had a loop a uh, tool that I was using that kind of broke on me. So I decided to just keep the drawstring inside as I was sewing. And in fact, I had to open up one of the seams to get it inserted. So that's kind of what that little um, bit is there at the top of the hood. Um, but I learned my lesson when it came to the bottom hemline and I had the drawstring fully inserted and ready to go for that bottom hem. And I sewed that at one inch and uh, kept that drawstring inside there uh, to form the channel so I didn't have to reinsert that again. If you, depending on your fabric and the type of tools that you had, um, that could be different for you. So remember that I left an opening there to allow for me to turn and when I went back to top stitch I made sure to get that closed up. Um, I did a couple of double lines on my pocket for just finishing everything off. Um, and I did that before I installed the lining. But top stitching really made the coat not only have those channels, but also gives it a little bit more of a professional look. Now, as far as the sleeves, I did not use the same finishing method that I did for the hood and the bottom hem. I, like I said before, I shortened the lining by one inch and then I finished the canvas part of the exterior sleeve and I folded that up and um, kind of caught the edge of the lining hem. And then I just followed the tutorial directions and uh, inserted the elastic uh, and I think it turned out really nice. Now, I noticed that when I was sewing this, I was also wearing my handmade legato jeans, which would be a perfect uh, piece to accompany your handmade clef coat. 
I could not wait to put this on. This is another one of those makes where I was like, I can't believe I made this. And uh, when I went home and showed that to my husband that night, he was like, I can't believe you made this either. So getting compliments like that always feels amazing. Um, he also did ask if I would make him a version of this. And we might be experimenting with that later because this is a relaxed version. Um, and as long as we can get the fit in the shoulders correct, I don't see why this couldn't be used for um, a menswear version as well. Um, please also take a note of what the workshop looks like right now after sewing all day long. Um, things are kind of chaotic and a mess, but that just means that I had a great sewing day and a great day sewing my lined cut coat. Whether or not you choose to sew a lined version, I hope you take a closer look at the new clef coat sewing pattern. You can find it at lovenotions.com and for the rest of its release week, you can get $3 off this fantastic new pattern. A huge thank you goes out to the team of sewists who helped us test this pattern and we cannot wait to see you in this pattern and enjoying it as much as the rest of us do.